Hey there, Maponauts. I am excited to give you another educational video. This time we're gonna be talking about fertilizer. And the reason why we're doing that is because most people right now are wondering what they're gonna feed their plants. They're going out around on forums, online, Facebook groups, they're asking what other people are feeding their plants so they can have an idea of what they're gonna be using for this growing season. On top of that, I'm gonna give you my feeding program that I'll be using this growing season 2024. You can follow along if you want. If not, it's okay. You can pick whatever you want, okay? There are two ways that you can go about feeding your plants. One, you can do a soil test on your, on your potted plants or your plants in the ground, and you add only the missing nutrients, right? That would be the optimal way of going around feeding your plants. Or two, if you want to go blindly without a soil test, then you can stick to a ratio of 3-1-2. There's a reason why you want to stick to a ratio of 3-1-2. For example, right here, we got this fertilizer right here. This is a 12-4-8. This is a 3-1-2 ratio. And everything has a purpose. And it is because of the way that these nutrients get used up in the soil and the way that these nutrients move through the soil composition are all different. For example, this one right here, 12556. This is not a 312 ratio. This is way, this is a whole lot of phosphorus. If you were to apply this a lot, eventually you're gonna have an overage of phosphorus. What does an overage of phosphorus do? Well, it inhibits a plant from absorbing iron and manganese, and that is very bad. So you can use this maybe once every blue moon or something, and you will be fine, okay? No, no judgment here. But if you were to continue using this product over and over again, eventually those phosphorus levels are gonna get too high, and your plant is going to die. Right here, you're not gonna have that problem okay because you are doing a 3-1-2 ratio phosphorus tends to hang around in the top layer of the soil for long periods of time and the way that this nutrient moves through the soil is extremely slow and at times it takes years to even reach the root system where the plant can actually even benefit from so you should always assume that you have some phosphorus on your soil and you should always assume that you're lacking some nitrogen on your soil all right so this is why i like to stay on a 312 ratio but i do soil tests okay i do soil tests so i don't have that problem right i can just add the missing nutrients but this year i am going to begin my program with some synthetic and then i'm going to move to organic because both can coexist and i'm going to explain to you a little bit more about that okay now you're ready to buy your fertilizer your bag of fertilizer or your uh, in liquid form or whatever it is it's okay okay you come here to a big box store and you're hit with all this and now you're blocked you don't know what the hell are you gonna pick for your plants, okay? Because you're seeing here, palm tree, evergreen, flower food. You're seeing all purpose, evergreen, more evergreen, tomato and vegetables, citrus, right? And you don't really know what you're gonna be giving your plants. Well. What you need to do is you need to erase this because this is to target you. It's to target you, right? Because if you got a raised bed with some tomatoes and vegetables, right? And you come here to uh, big box stores and you want to grab a fertilizer, you're not gonna go for that. You're not gonna go for this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go for this. You're gonna pick this back and you're gonna take it. And that is what the uh, manufacturer wants you to do. They want you to pick this bag all right and for those of you that are kind of skeptical about what i'm saying let me prove to you that what i'm saying is correct right here we got tomato and vegetables tomato and vegetables right here we got a reading right because 
forget about this. What's important is this and that, right? Four, five, four. Eight, five, one. Well, somebody has to be incorrect and somebody gotta be correct. Which one is it, right? Well, I'm gonna give you the answer to that. None of them are correct and none of them are incorrect. That's the, that's the thing about it. There's no such a thing as a tomato and vegetable fertilizer. Fertilizer is fertilizer, okay? Nitrogen is nitrogen, phosphorus is phosphorus, and potassium is potassium, no matter how you wanna put it, okay? So there's no such a thing as a tomato or a vegetable fertilizer, okay? You can pick whichever and you will be fine. You can feed that to tomatoes and vegetables. You can feed that to tomatoes and vegetables. You can feed that to tomatoes and vegetables. You can also feed that. You can feed that, all right? It don't really matter. And it's the same with Japanese maples and conifers. You can feed whichever product here that you want. You will be fine. Now, there are some products that you want to avoid from this rack, all right? Stay away from balance. That stay away from that. This is not good. This is a one-one-one ratio. Okay. If you don't have a soil test that tells you that you're lacking all three nutrients, stay away from it. Okay. Get it out. Stick to a three-one-two ratio, and you will be fine. As long as you're feeding on a three-one-two ratio, you can never go wrong. Now there are some fertilizers that got a higher number of nitrogen, right? This is a 12. This right here, this is a four, right? miracle Grow. this is a 24, right? You want to stay below 12. 10, eight, eight is what I recommend personally, okay? Stay within the eight. Now, if you go higher, like 24, then do a reduced rate and you will be fine. Now, luckily for me, this product doesn't last long. It's just a quick shot of nitrogen and it just goes away fast, right? So that kind of works for me for what I want to do, okay? So I don't need to go as low as a rate. And here on Holotone, you have a really big buffer. You can grab literally just a handful and just throw it there. You'll be fine. You're not going to burn anything. Your plants are going to love it. Okay. And that's a good thing about this organic fertilizer, right? That for you to burn something is just going to take a whole lot from you to really damage something due to an over application of fertilizer. Now, don't get me wrong. All these products, if you abuse them, you will have some problems, all right? Everything in excess is problematic. For example, you need water to survive, right? If you over drink water, you can die from that too because everything in excess is bad, okay? Here's the other fertilizer right here, palm tree and uh, shrubs evergreens and stuff like that. Can you feed that to your Japanese maple? Yes, you can. You can feed that, you can use that, you can use anything here, as long as you're using the right ratio, meaning that you need to do an application in accordance to what the manufacturer states on their label, and you should be fine. I hear a lot of people talk about Osmocote for their Japanese maples. Can you use it? Absolutely, you can use Osmocote. Look at this, six month feed. Wow, guys, like wow, F six months of straight feeding, right? Now, look at the numbers, let's look at the numbers, all right? 15, nine, 12, 15, nine, 12, all right? This is great fertilizer, okay? I, hell, I would recommend it. But this is not the fertilizer I'm gonna use this year. Perhaps next growing season, I may consider this Osmo coat, okay? Just because I have seen a lot of people have a lot of success with Osmo coat. I have a different feeding program for this year and I am going to share it to you right now. 
for my first application. Boom, Miracle Grow. There's a reason why. For me, these two fertilizers can coexist in a garden. There are tools for me, okay? And this is what I want you guys to start looking at, okay? Synthetic and organic can coexist in your garden. One is immediately available to your plant, meaning that if I were to put this product right now, it is nine in the morning, by the afternoon, my plant is already absorbing some of that nitrogen, some of that phosphorus, and some of that potassium. And this one needs to decompose first, meaning that the microbiology in the soil needs to devour this product into, and turn it into a smaller molecule enough to penetrate the root system. Right now, the molecules on this fertilizer, they're too big to enter the root system, all right? And I'm gonna explain to you a little bit more about that. So going back, okay? I want my nitrogen right now for my Japanese maples. There's a reason why, okay? Last time I fed my Japanese maple was July. It is April, guys. I know for a fact that my Japanese maples, my conifers, everything at home, right now, everything is starving. They need nitrogen. I cannot put this on my Japanese maple and wait for it to decompose and being turned into a smaller molecule enough so it can enter the root system. I don't have time for that. I will be using that, okay? And then after I'm done with that, 30 to 40 days later, I'm gonna move into organic. That's where I will enter my organic program, okay? And I will continue my organic program throughout the year which in reality is going to be one or two applications more and then that's it, okay? So, mid, uh, I'm gonna start with this one. April, third week of April. Right here, I'm gonna move on third week of uh, May. I'm gonna use my Holitone. The reason why I'm moving to organic is because at that time, I already know that my Japanese maples, my conifers are not going to be starving to death. Okay, I know that they can wait for this puppy to decompose and feed my plants. By the way, in the website says that this fertilizer lasts 45 days, which is the fastest release organic fertilizer that I have seen. Usually they are 60 days, 90 days, stuff like that. This one says 45, I don't know. I need to do a little bit more research, okay? now. Now that I have fed my plants with this, I can I can wait, you know, a couple of months and I'm not there constantly feeding my plants because at the end of the day, look, I can run a full program with this, no problem, but then I'm gonna be a slave of my trees. I got over 450 Japanese maples and conifers. I can't be feeding this stuff every, what, 14 days a month? I can't do that. I'll be a slave, right? Look, I moved to organic. Look, long lasting, slow release can't go wrong with that guys cannot go wrong with that now there, here's the other thing out there that i need you guys to uh, kind of erase out of your mind there's a lot of trash talk in the community about synthetic and organic and there's a constant war between the synthetic people and the organic people and it's downright kind of disgusting right they are all good fertilizers guy at the end of the day you can use them both they have their purpose in the garden they they're tools that you can use depending right look if you have a garden bed right now that got tomato and got peppers and all that stuff right and they need to be pushed the the window that you have is small you're up north and your growing season is very small don't go with an organic fertilizer you ain't going nowhere you gotta go synthetic guy you have to go synthetic you want that nitrogen in the ground fast so it can start producing yield and you can take benefit from your plants. If you start using organic, you ain't going nowhere. All right? You're, gonna, you're not going to get the same yield, right? So uh, for those people that got a small window of growing season, synthetic is all you got, bro. So <laughs> there are tools that you can use in your garden. They can coexist, all right? So now 
that you know my program, you can follow along. If not, look, there's nothing wrong if you stick with Holitone. You can put Holitone or you can put any other organic fertilizer. Holitone is not the only organic fertilizer out there. There's, uh, there's plenty more and they don't have a whole lot of them here. Uh, maybe at the lawn section they have a little bit more, but uh, you can pick any organic fertilizer. Hey, I've seen people that they live and die by earthworm castings. All right, and they use this and then that's it. 0.05, I, I wouldn't give this to my, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't run a, a, a feeding program on worm castings. That's just me. I like to push my trees just a little bit more than 0.5 on nitrogen, all right? So there you go, guys. I gave you my feeding program for growing season 2024. I will be picking up a couple of boxes of miracle Grow and a couple of bags of this organic Holitone. And that's what I'll be using this year. You can follow along if you want. If not, it's okay. I hope that you guys learned something today. Feeding your plants doesn't have to be overwhelming. You can literally pick any fertilizer from here and you will be good. But stay away from balance and stay away from large numbers on the phosphorus. Stay away from it. Trust me, you don't want to go there, okay? So stay on a 312 ratio. You will be fine unless you're doing a soil test and you're only adding the missing nutrients. With that being said, I got nothing else for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Stay naughty, my friends.